All right, we have a special episode today because we have a new background. Right here is all my hopes and dreams in life on display for everybody. This is what fifteen thousand dollars wasted looks like no, right it's now. Not, it's more than fifteen thousand. Fuck. Fucking even worse. I wasted enough money to to not want it to be undercut. Yeah, fuck. exactly. <laughs> you know what? It's better that it's better now that you spent all that money and at least it's being used to where there were just piles of boxes in your office and I felt a little bad I was like this guy I hope he's I hope he's gonna use it one day because he spent a lot of money yeah and if you want to know why I spent all this money or if you want to know how it's here why it's here now if you want to know if I even like Pokemon if you want to know anything there's a new video coming out. We just filmed it. And it's essentially the story behind buying all this shit, why I bought it, who I bought it from, the idea behind it, everything A to Z about all this stuff. But for now, we're putting it like this so that I could business expense it. So no, I'm just sense. kidding. That's not exactly why we're putting it here. But now no, it's, it's uh, actually, it honestly, uh, it looks... It looks sick, but it's giving like I still live in mom's basements vibe, you know. But it's fucking nice. I love it. I love it. No, well, honestly, it's an expensive all mom's aside, basement. All, all jokes aside, it's listen. If it's a hobby that you like, and I respect it, you know. No, you have to watch the video if you want. to I will that. watch the video. So then that's yeah, that's it. We'll, we'll we'll stop there. And then behind Nick is actually two other NFTs that I actually three NFTs that I also lost a bunch of money on. So. That's pretty good too, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty great too. And then next to that is all games from my childhood, which that's that's kind of cool. So if you guys want to learn how to spend money <laughs> and invest <laughs> it, make sure that you watch Michael's videos. No, I'm just joking. Well, one thing I learned from that, though, all this is like, first off, this is probably worth more than I paid, though, but like the, the fucking, the torture would be to try to sell all this but shit. But that's what I'm saying. It's worth what someone's willing to pay you, correct? No, like, no, it's the retail price of all these things is more. Like if you go to any store and you try to buy these products. Okay, but let's just say, you can you go to a store tomorrow morning in Montreal and sell everything and make a profit? If I sold it to them for, I would have to sell close to my cost for some things. Other things I would have to sell, I could sell for a profit for sure because it's worth a lot more. You'll see the video, you'll see the video. But it's not like I actually lost money on this. Those NFTs, I definitely lost money on. But one thing I learned from all this is what I do is real estate, and that's all I'm investing in. Yeah. Ever. Speaking of real estate, brother, I know that off pod, we were discussing a little bit about AI, and that's kind of what we wanted to discuss today, a little bit about how we've been both incorporating AI into our business. I know that I do a lot of stuff on my end, and I know that you started, or or are you like... No, I'm you currently started? using a lot of AI in, uh, in the business. Actually, one of the new guys that we have on board, Fred... He's been amazing and he's been helping us implement so many different things to do with AI. It's been insane. So I'm happy to share a bunch of the things that we're using it for. And honestly, I think this is going to be probably, I think I'm giving away golden nuggets to be quite honest, because it's only recently that I'm implementing all these things and it's been a complete game changer. Really? Yeah. In terms of what? Like in terms of productivity or efficiency? I'll go through one by one, honestly, but it, maybe you want to start because I'm going to pull out my laptop after. I'm going to actually like go through one by one about all the stuff we've done. Well, I'd love to know right now, but there's no time like the present. Yeah, you like want me to slap out my laptop? Yeah, of course. I want to see the bad boy that I'm going to win. I'm also, I bring out my laptop just to be funny about it because it's the bet, right? Yeah, it's the bet. Yeah, that's the whole but point. But there's missing it. a couple of features on it. Okay, ready? Yeah. I'm still on 75 hard, by the way, if you didn't watch the other episode. So the bet's still live. The bet is still live, and for those that don't know, basically Michael's doing 75 hard, which is a challenge by Andy Versella. Vers yeah, I can never pronounce his last name. And if he loses the challenge, then he not only has to give me this brand new Mac that he spent way too much money on, plus the double screens. So, yeah. That's, uh, that's kind of the inside joke of with... It's not an inside joke, though. Well, not inside joke. It's inside It's bet. real. Yeah. It's life or death, bro. No, it is. But so as you're pulling it up, basically just so I know, like you, because I know like it's something that you recently started. It's got to be what, in the last two weeks that you that you started implementing AI? 
I mean, probably within the last month, I would say. Okay. Yeah. And what have been like, I'm just curious, what has been like some of the well, biggest... Well, while I put it up, you tell me what's uh, what's one of the game changers for you. Well, for me, in all honesty, there's been a few different factors that we're using for AI. And for those of you that don't know, um, I own a marketing agency. And with it, one of the things that we've really been using is, of course, ChatGPT. But I've been using ChatGPT for things like automations, uh, a lot of copywriting. Um, What's a lot automations, of, though? Like, go into detail about it. So using things like automations for email marketing automations. Through um, ChatGPT? Through ChatGPT that we connect with Go High Level. We also have prompts that we have it. So like customer service. Let's say someone goes on, uh, let's say someone goes on a website and they they want to speak with a customer support. We can do prompts with Chat GPT. There's a lot of things that you can do with OpenAI, I should say, and that's kind of the things that we've been using it for. But more specifically, I've been really using it for content creation, for more streamlining the business. And now one of the things that we did just start was the Voyager AI. I'll be honest, we've been, I've been loafing on it a little bit just because it's not where it wants to be. So Voyager AI is pretty much that app that I had uh, purchased Yeah, that is a program. And basically this program is an artificial intelligence that works as someone that can do cold calling for you. And it sounds like a human. The only thing that I've seen and the big problem that I've seen with this is if you don't have the proper prompts, which is for those that don't know, a prompt is saying an action for, let's say when someone says this, do this or say this or bring this is you kind of have to build it out. But it like on the phone, let's say on the phone, really by the phone. So it's like, so if it's on the phone and you ask it, like, uh, you could really stump it sometimes with specific prompts. So, yeah, so you can do prompts on what you want to say should a person answer. Yeah, I know, that's what I'm saying. But let's say a person says something different than it's able to answer. What does it do? So that's where it's been a bit comp a bit challenging where it's it answers, it'll answer things, but it'll sound extremely robotic. And it's gonna be like this sounds like a scam or a fraud, right? Yeah. And it just doesn't sound legit. But there's many features that you can use it for. And one of them is, let's say you have a list of prospects. So in your case, it'd be, let's say you have a whole list of people with buildings that you have their name, their phone number, and you want to, and you would basically upload that list and the AI would start calling them saying, Hey, this is Michael from investing real estate. And then you kind of do the pauses. So that's what I'm working out is really the script. So it's a lot of me and me and the AI going back and forth and seeing how it would work in terms of me asking questions. Because sometimes it's like, it just does like a whole spiel, right? And it's just like, I no chance I would listen to this. You know, like if someone's just calling and there's a spiel. Yeah. So it's a lot of just going back and forth and kind of just thinking of what are the questions or what are different things that people would say. And for me in particular, it's more the objections, right? So someone says, oh, I'm not interested right now. Well, asking this question and handling it. And it's kind of just building that out. Yeah, it makes sense. Which is the tough part. So we started this in December and I'm really hoping that I can have this complete I will have it complete, but really to where I want it to be by uh, the end of February. That's really my goal. It's just, it's a lot of time consuming. So that's really been one thing that is going to be a game changer because not only will it be able to do cold calling with the lists that we have, but it also does appointment confirmations. So when someone books a meeting with our team, it will, it will call them, it will text them. Uh, it will pretty much put it into all the other systems that we have in place in order to just do less on our end and have it that it's as if we have an appointment setter that's confirming our uh, meetings yeah, that, as yeah, well as sick. for that's past sick. leads. So, you know, you're, um, you know, usually in sales when you have someone that's in a hot pipeline and then you, you know, they're on the fence, you just enclose them or they just don't understand. It's not a right time. Whatever the objection of is that you couldn't close them. What this can do is we can then put an automation and say, hey, have this program 
call these prospects three months later and get them back on the phone to try to book in a call with us again. So there's different systems that you got to do. And I, it's like for each different system though, you got to have the different conversations and then you implement it. So at the end game, it's going to be phenomenal, but now it's just like, it's not where it is yet. And how could you train it? How do you train it? Like, could you give it, let's say recordings or is it really you having to speak to it live or great question? Yeah. So great question. So right now at the moment for this particular program that I'm using, it's really kind of like you, uh, HTML, it's like coding a website. So there's like, think of it as coding. When this person says this, this happens, right? So it's so all text-based. It's all text-based and not on from what I could do. I'm not sure in the back end. I'm assuming on the back end, like one of the th- features that is coming out is we can give it enough recordings for it to use my voice or John's voice or anyone on the team's voice to call. So that's another feature. I'm personally not going to use that just because I don't know where the AI is now. And like, I don't want, I don't feel comfortable yet unless the AI is like completely good. And it's my voice then I would rather not have that because it could actually be like the opposite, right? Like, Oh, do you remember doing this? Um, but right now to answer your question is the feature that it's really that that it's doing maybe on the back end it's learning. I'm assuming it is, but right now it's all through like custom, uh, codes that you have to do and you have to put prompts and you got to give it like handle this with like this emotion. So with that, another big aspect has also been using chat GBT to kind of help me with, you know, certain of those tones or, you know, like kind of just putting the context towards the conversation. You're like, don't be aggressive. If someone's like this, you know, answer properly because or else it can go off the rails. So you really kind of have to be specific, but still give it like a bit of a leeway or else man, like that thing can probably who knows and go off. So that's really the one that I'm working towards. And that one I think is really going to be a game changer in particular with this AI, because I think if I can implement this right now for myself and we have the hard part done, then when we go with our clients and they may not have a sales team, you know, and they may not have the time, then our vision is to incorporate this into the business so that way it's part of the services that we also offer but once we have the code yeah. so that's definitely one of the big things so besides that for the outreach that's kind of the outreach method that we're working on obviously we use it a lot for uh, helping us with the copywriters so back in the day we obviously had to hire a lot of copywriters or john would do a lot of the copywriting and you know we use it for inspiration and just having the proper prompts. So prompts is telling it what you want and just kind of the more detailed oriented you can have those prompts, the outcome is just phenomenal. So that's something that we're really working on in terms of landing page copywriting, uh, ads copywriting, email marketing copywriting, and really just every single aspect of marketing as well as just kind of making everything more streamlined with AI. So there's a lot of systems that we use. Um, and yeah, that's been, that's kind of been really the two biggest pillars. The other one that I'm starting to dabble with, and that's the one that probably intrigues me the most is the one where it's uh, for video content and it's where you sit there and then you have that AI that yeah, that generate. one's really cool. So that one is one that I've, kind of put on the back burner because there's obviously a lot of other projects and it's at I don't like the big time restraint is me learning how to do this or I could probably like I've, I've dabbled around with some people that say they can do it but they haven't given me like any any like solid evidence that they can do a really good job like everything they showed me was kind well, of there's shit. just sites that do it I forget the name of the site uh, so synth- synth- yeah, uh, synthesia synthesia or yeah that's one like of that. them and then you can use the other one for your voice and then combine them the only thing though is I would need a perfect shot like this in order to make it what I want right so it's really just having that proper shot and the sky's the limit, man. Like it's insane, insane, insane. Yeah, but I heard like from reviews that it still kind of looks like it's AI. It doesn't mm-hmm. look like it's a real human. You kind of look a bit weird and awkward. But I think in the future that's going to be incredible. You know what I mean? 
dude, it's going to be absolutely incredible. And I, I thought so too. I've tried it before, but I think I just haven't, we, I haven't gone good enough because the one of Billy Jean, Billy Jean marketing, he's a guy online, really great mar- marketer that, uh, I've been following for many years. He's an absolute legend. When I saw that video, I was like, holy shit. Like that's insane. So the video I'm, I'm referring to is it was an ad of him of 30 seconds and on that 30 second video, it looks like him. It sounds like him. And then at the end, it's like him pitching you on his services on how AI is changing the game. And then at the end, it just says like this whole video is actually not him filming it, but it's all made through AI. And that one right there, I was like, holy moly. So I've been actually doing a bit of his videos. He's got some great free content on YouTube um, that I've been really watching into because Do you know what site he uses though. He uses for it? so like, many. No, for that to make his model. Do you know yeah, what site so, he uses? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna pull it up. So he uses and again, he uses a few of them. So basically, he's been using the following, which is, uh, let me just see. Yeah, so he's been using Synthesia. Okay, that's the one he's that. been using for the recording because you can upload your own recording, right? So what I've been from what I've been learning is that you can upload your own recording, but you just really have to have a good shot and a good angle. So that to create way, the 3D avatar to create the 3D avatar. Yeah, and then once they charge you, you like two grand for the 3D avatar, even if you have your own scans and pictures and stuff. No, no, no. It's just a video of you. No, I reached out to them. To, they said it's like two grand to create your own avatar. To create your own avatar. Yeah. Okay. Be, okay. Well. It could be for maybe if you want to do like the presentations and all that, but from what he had explained in the video and what I've been dabbling with is you just upload and then you can put the text with your voice, but it's, you're not an actual avatar. Yeah. It's not your you avatar. Change. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah. not an avatar. It's just like, let's say me right now. It's not you. It is me. No, but you well, can upload your own well, content. These guys are fucking scammed me because I emailed them and they're like, it costs two grand. Maybe to make, if you want to make an avatar, but of this, myself, I don't know. It, I mean, I didn't hear that. And when I've been dabbling with it and the way that he showed me was not like that at all. Um, it was really just, you have to film, you have to have good content. And then also you have to pay, obviously you got to pay some sort. There's a, but you don't need to pay two grand for, to have your avatar. Look what he said. Hi, Michael. Thanks for your email. See here. And he goes, custom avatars are 1,000 USD per avatar per year. And that's for... I was like, hey, Victor, what's the cost to get my own AI avatar of myself to create content with? Right. And that was his reply. And that was his reply? Yeah. Well, listen, I'll have the answer for you. Like I said, this is something I'm still dabbling in. If it's free, I would fucking love to do it. Nothing's free. Everything I've learned, nothing's free, especially when it comes to AI. There's always that... uh, They always get you on the lowest thing. And then they hook you in with like one thing and then everything that you want for the AI is always an arm and a leg. So it could be that it is two grand, but well, from one grand from, now that I, uh, one grand, it could be, honestly, it would make sense, but it could be for the platform for the year. Right. Cause I know there's different pricing options. So maybe you can be monthly. It could be whatever the case may be. Right. Generally speaking, I look at it through monthly packages. So it could be over the year if I wanted to do it, it could be a thousand bucks. I have no idea. Well, that's what they said. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it changed. I mean, there's other platforms. I, would as well have, I was down to do it. The only problem is, is like, I didn't know Billy Jean used that one. And when I looked at reviews for that one specifically, it said it didn't look great. Yeah. But maybe it's because Billy Jean actually got it professionally done, his could scan, be. and they didn't. Oh man, this guy's been into massive amount of AI. Like he even changed like Billy Jean is marketing AI. Oh wow, that's like jokes. he's huge into AI. So and what other sites did he have? There's so many, man. There's so many, but a lot of them I took photos of. So <sighs> Descript, which is a good one. There is the one that um hold on, I took a how is Descript? I, I'm going to search that. Yeah. So Descript, there's a, so it's basically to make podcast videos. So that one's good. There's a couple I sent to Adam today. There's video.ai. So that one is basically, these ones I've tried. I haven't tried video.ai, but I've tried a few to try to make a couple of reels. Yeah, me too. It wasn't fantastic. It wasn't wasn't fantastic. I think 
the thing that makes a really successful reel is having context and having a good video. Everything around that doesn't really work well, especially on what we've seen has yeah. been the ones with kind of like a hook and a bit of an introduction. Also, you know, things that get on people's nerves definitely work really well. Yeah. You know, that's or being for sure. wrong. Sorry. Or being wrong. Yeah. Or something. being wrong for sure. For sure. For but, sure. Uh, okay. So I'll, I'll get into some of the things that I find are useful. I, these are things that I use day to day for real estate related activity. So it's like, uh, probably more relates to what like a student would use or what a regular business owner would use specifically on their day to day or even anybody in business or, or anybody who uses PDFs and stuff in word. So basically there's this tool chat OCR. It's, um, it essentially recognizes text within PDFs, but I have like Adobe PDF pro, which I'm sure a lot of people do and it recognizes text, right? So, but this thing, when you get the pro version, it recognizes even handwriting and we tested it because on sometimes on our offers or documents, people cross things out and they'll like put their handwriting over it or put their handwriting on the side to like make adjustments and then they'll initial or something. This thing was able to recognize the person's handwriting and it was in cursive. You know how insane that That's is? That's fucked. So it's really, really, really good at recognizing handwriting and cursive and stuff. It's really good at recognizing all text within PDFs, even if it's a picture of something or a shitty scan or an old document. So good at that. And then what we use that to do is like, first of all, a lot of these softwares, they can't even read the text of a PDF if it's not like super clear. Like yeah. If it was even scanned, it's already a lot harder for these platforms to be able to read the text on it. This thing has proven to be amazing no matter what. So I could give it PDFs and stuff that it's able to read and it, no matter what the quality is. And then I could use it to do many things once it has that data. Sometimes, for example, like I'll convert the data into like from the PDF, I'll convert the data into let's say tables and then it outputs it in Excel, mm -hmm. which is nuts. Like let's say you have to manually go and get data out of a PDF. I'll tell it all this data, put it in PDF, put it in Excel files with these columns and blah, 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 blah. And these are and all things that you have to me. do manually beforehand. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. It's insane. The other thing I do it for is like, I use it to actually analyze documents like leases, offers, any type of real estate related document. It's insane. And what I'll do is I'll upload all the documents. So let's say I had a question about a lease, but this tenant was there for 25 years and every five year they had a new lease and then they have a document that like extends the lease, let's say. So they have their initial lease in year one to five. And then from year five to 10, they have an extension document, then another one, then another one. So there's like five documents total over 25 years that are that we need to analyze to really know where the tenant is at today because the extensions they just mention like the previous documents you know what i mean mm -hmm. so you have to really understand all the documents and read all the documents so usually that would take me hours of reviewing different documents especially more of the people in the office that help with that now I, I just uploaded everything in there and then i asked it a question what was the monthly rent in year 10 i don't know and then it just spits out the answer. And you got to be careful though, because it might not be right. And if you're, if you rely on it and then it's wrong, like, especially in real estate, you can yeah, make can huge mistakes, but I went and verified the information and it was accurate so far since I've been testing it. So it's been since really been good. It? Yeah. Well, it's the same thing for me. Like, let's say I do the same thing for blogs, let's say. And then it's a blog that we had written up and blogs are usually long and we want to put that into an email to send out to the email to, you know, to your subscribers. We'll kind of take the same thing and then trim it down, but with the information. So that's one thing for sure is kind of summarizing. But again, I have to prove for you because sometimes it doesn't, it's been accurate, I would say about 85% of the time, but there's still some parts that it's learning, right? But yeah. in five years, and this is like in the first yeah, I know, I know. year or year, year-ish, I, I believe, uh, I, th I think chat GPT has been out for what about just a little like bit a over year. a year, yeah. which is crazy. Yeah, I know it's man. insane. It's insane. But what I find crazy about this is that it's not like I'm asking it a question that is specifically referenced within the document. 
You know what I mean? Like I could phrase my question a hundred different ways about what the rent was in X year. Mm -hmm. It doesn't specifically say the rent in this, like the document doesn't specifically say the rent in year 10 is, it might just say year 10, then it'll have a colon, then it'll have the number. So it reads all the text and then it understands that below this text is where the, the rent is for these years. And then it pinpoints that year and it tells me the rent, let's say. Like it's very advanced Crazy. already. That's insane that it's able to do that, you know? Yeah. You, like you would think it would say, I can't find it. Nowhere in the document does it reference year 10 rent. You know what I mean? Yeah. And also it's analyzing and then it's coming up with it's yeah. analyzing it as a human because it's not specifically saying yeah. what you're asking. Exactly. It. So it's reading it, it's analyzing it, and then it's giving it back exactly. the information as if you were doing it, but just in seconds. Exactly. Which is nuts. I know, it's insane. And then another thing I do with it is there's this new thing that I haven't used yet, but I'm I've tested it out a little bit. It's called create your own GPT. That's similar to what you were talking about to a certain extent. I mean, it's but not, it's not you, made for sales, uh, create, but you were talking about outreach and stuff. Yeah, correct. This is like, you're creating your own avatar, but it doesn't do like outreach for you. Like it's not connected to any CRM to start doing outreach for you. I'm sure you could figure out a way to connect it to Zapier and stuff. There was, so that's the big thing that I got to, uh, basically all of these tools that I'm using, the tools are great. The complicated part is setting everything up with my systems that I have in place right now. So that's a, it's a lot of Zapier connections yeah. and you got to know the rules and when this, so that's the more complicated part that I find we're with AI. And that's the thing that I have like to spend the most amount of time with for yeah, sure. Makes sense. Makes sense. But this one, basically it's similar to your thing in the sense that you have to train it yourself. So it's like it gives you chat GPT, but then you train it yourself and it remembers mm -hmm. based on the data you're giving it. So I'll give you some examples of what you could do with it. You could give it, let's say, case law. Like you could give it... Uh, What's case law? Okay, well, case law is like specific law that uh, of like cases that have taken place. Okay. And then if you study the outcomes of those cases, then you get like law that people that like kind of we abide by based on judgments in specific cases, let's say, but let's say you gave it not case law in particular, maybe case law is a good example, but to make it more clear, let's say you would give it like the civil code of wherever your whatever province or state or city you're in, you give it the city, the, the, the civil code, then you ask it, then it, it's trained on the civil code. And then you give it other documents to train it. So you give it civil code, you give it, uh, I don't know, the bar exam. You give it, Let's say you give it all the law documents it could ever want. And then you start asking questions. Now it's a legitimate lawyer. Wow. Whereas like when you ask chat GPT questions, like it's not specifically being trained on, like it, it uh, for sure has seen those documents. But again, even chat GPT is also from like 2021. They say they don't, it hasn't updated past then. Now it could surf the web and stuff, but still it doesn't have specific data past 2021 that it stores, let's say. But if you're feeding it PDFs of all the, that law, you're giving it the most up-to-date version of our law. And then it's, it's, doing, it's making decisions based on that. That would be one imp example of an implementation. Another example would be like, let's say for us, okay? I get so many questions related to how to do specific things within the business or even how to deal with specific what to do, how to analyze specific leases, how to evaluate properties, how to submit offers, how to do all these different things, let's just say, right? I could train that with all our offers, all our data, all my conversations with the team, like legitimately giving it all my conversations, let's just say, I do all this stuff. And then when they ask it, it's taking data that I've already, like it's taking my data to be able to answer the questions. Could probably answer it better okay. than me if you train it properly. So it's basically like a Google, it's like an internal Google for your business in a sense. It, it, like you could create it to be that, you but that's one implementation that. wow, of it. Yeah, that's but then solid. what's really cool, that's why I asked about if yours could be trained by uploading PDFs and stuff is because this thing could be trained by uploading PDFs and other types of documents, even yeah. Excel files. So it's like, it's so much easier to train it than prompting it. Do this when this happens, do that. Instead, you just say, here's a thousand PDFs on information I want you to know. 
Yeah. And then it just knows it. I mean, it maybe could on the one for Voyager, the one that I'm using right now, that that's the main one that we invest. It's not cheap. It's quite, it was like, it was like two grand uh, just to start off with it. And then they charge you per minute for the calling. And with that, I didn't install, like I have to, I, I now have to see the scripts and I see the code, but they have a whole team that you get onboarded with. Uh, and then they build it out and they also make the adjustments. But the only thing I have to say, and I don't want to call them out. Uh, I'm going to be calling them out. The only problem though, is that a lot of the time with this team that we've been dealing with, and there's still a small company. I don't understand what those people, like it's people from uh, third world countries and their accents are so strong. And what they think sounds like, like their English is different than ours, right? It's like very to the point because they have very limited uh, vocabulary. Like not voc- they have li- limited vocabulary to like the slangs and how someone would answer this in North America. Same thing when I speak to people in the States is different than, you know, so a Canadian well, or it's anywhere. It's like when I speak French. And exactly. Like it's well, nowhere you know what close I mean? so to the slang that a French exactly. person would Exactly. So they're speak. really like structured. So when you're asking questions or like asking objections to this AI, it's very like robotic. It's not, it doesn't. So I think that's been, that's been probably the biggest challenge has been the language barrier with them and trying to explain to them like this is what you guys got to do and they don't really understand me and I don't really understand them. Like that's the only thing with this one. So I'm not, I don't know if it's the best one. I'm just invested into it, you know? So I'm like, I kind of have to at least get my money's worth, you know, but the worst, worst, worst case, what I'm thinking is if it doesn't do in terms of the cold calling of what we bought it for, at least I know it'll be able to do the appointment confirmations and that we've tested. It works really great. Uh, rescheduling meetings. So call, Hey, reschedule, find a time. And then it's connected to my calendar. Uh, it's connected to all my systems. You can pretty much implement for any system that you want, but for my systems, it can implement everything and it could do at least the appointment confirmation, the rescheduling and the follow-up. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily need to do the cold calling. The cold calling I think is going to be a feature down the line, but from what I'm seeing right now, it, it has a lot of work to do. Yeah. But that's what I was telling you even initially. Cause I was like, look, if it, I'll see you test it out. And if it works, I would get it for sure for my business. But I just knew that AI isn't there yet for language. Let's mm-hmm. say for speaking. Yeah. You for know, speaking for voice, for, sure. for, for doing actual voice calls. Let's say I just, I just assumed it wasn't there yet. And even us, we looked at specific platforms that just do that for for AI making calls for you. And it all sounds super robotic. It needs to think for itself and it needs to sound like a human before it could do cold calls. Correct. But it could do emails. It could, I'm sure it could do emails. I'm sure it could do anything text based. It's going to sound probably a hundred times better than any of us. We already have that implemented for certain things like auto responders for questions, AI that would answer questions. Very, I keep it though, very strict just simply because I don't want to go off the rails with like, let's say some potential clients or anything like that. So we keep it for like basic questions that I don't need to always answer right so rinse and repeat and that's been the biggest thing for me in my business has been just to automate repetitive tasks that would either take me time or i would need to have like 15 programs to do the now maybe two programs so like that ai system plus zapier for those of you that don't know what zapier is and we keep referring to zapier is just a platform that connects other platforms with rules so if this happens, then do this with this platform. And Zapier has been around for a long time. They have like, I don't know how many, like pretty much if you, if you can't do it on Zapier, then you, chances are you can't connect yeah, it yeah. internally. Like if it's not compatible with Zapier, it's, it doesn't work. So that's, that's really been it. And man, that, that's like, that's really the goal right now. I would say for me with, with, uh, with AI, how about nice, you? Like, nice. what's your, is your goal to just like, obviously you want to make the systems and the processes better, but for me, it's really been to save time. Yeah, for sure. It's to save time. But I I also think that for me, like right now, the goal with AI as a whole is that like I have, I have people in the office that I'm just kind of empowering them to use AI and 
and report to me and tell me how they want to implement it within the business and then we implement it. So for me, it's like I'm focused very much on deal flow and I have not much time to do anything else. So oh, what's our on deal flow? On deal flow for my actual business. Okay, what's that? Just for the people that... Uh, like deal flow, like dealing with closing deals, closing right. real estate deals. So because of that, I don't have infinite time to do all this research in AI and figure out how to implement it within my business. So they tell me what works and then I start using it. And essentially, whatever I could use that's simple to use... It's pretty straightforward and, you know, has a high likelihood that it's going to work, mm -hmm. then I'll implement it and I'll start using it ASAP and whatever they want to use that works, even if it's more complex, but it works for them and saves them time, like go ahead and use it. Yeah. And, that's, and, yeah. I feel you. I feel you on that. Yeah. But one thing I find insane before I even continue going on is for students, let's say, like if I was in school right now <sighs> with this thing, it would be insane. Okay. And, and, I would do everything for And me. that's why I'm telling you right now, and this is like, uh, that's why, w and we spoke about this off camera, I have uh, a good family friend of mine who's a, uh, I believe a principal or vice principal at one of the biggest, oh yeah, true. Uh, like high schools, French high schools here in uh, Montreal. And he's super into AI, like very big tech guy, like very big. And so... I want to speak with him because they're implementing, and I don't want to say the name of the school or anything because I don't know if, you know, it would be yeah, whatever. getting him in trouble because uh, of uh, yeah. but what they're implementing, they're rolling out. And man, we were just having some crazy, crazy, crazy discussions on how it is with students. Like, are you not scared that they're cheating with it? Like how, you know what I mean? So he's got some really great philosophies and I want to have him on. Yeah. Um, and that's definitely But is he something. trying to make the students stop using it? Not stop using it, but is he trying to make it so that he could catch the students that use it to kind of get away with doing their work? I, I listen, I don't want to speak for him, but from what with the conversations, I didn't go too, too deep with him in, in regards because it was like his birthday and, you know, we spoke yeah. a little bit. But from what the understanding that he had told me is AI is here and they kind of want to integrate it with the school and the system. So grading systems for the teacher, uh, students on, uh, you know, writing their essays. And obviously it's here. And I from what I understood is his philosophy is they need to we need to go with times right yeah yeah, yeah. it's like they're not gonna be able to stop people from they're using not gonna AI. be able to stop people from ai and i'm glad and i want that's why i want to discuss with them because i know for me one of the big things before even ai was out was like i had mentioned to you in high in the cjep so in cjep when i was doing my website development and they were making me build wordpress websites I, why me and this teacher would never get along because I was like, dude, why am I spending 10 hours on this website when I could pay a theme 30 bucks? And he would tell me, well, because the because of this and that's the summit. I said, aren't you teaching me how to be self-sufficient as a freelancer in order to do my work? And he's like, yes. So I said, well, if you are in my position and someone's hiring you to do the website, of course you need to know certain things, but really that it's, it's the time, the aspect. Yeah, you got to know certain things, but there's so much time that you can spend with paying for it. And that's the same thing with AI, right? It's like yeah. if, in school, yeah, you may not need it. And obviously you need to learn the basics, but at the end of the day, it, it would be delusional for people to think that a kid after high school will never use AI for work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come no, on. It's crazy. It's crazy. I agree with you 100%. The thing is, I find that there's a fine line in the sense that if you're a kid using AI to do your work, even if you're using it in like a healthy way where it doesn't do all your work, but it gives you inspiration or a starting point, and then you work from there and you're using it back and forth, I just kind of fear that they're not learning specific skills that let's say we had learned because like the AI kind of acts as like, let's say a crutch. Yeah. Yeah which that worries me a little bit. Either that or they just integrate themselves with AI the way we integrated ourselves with technology and they become like superhuman geniuses, which is probably, that's probably the outcome that's more likely. But uh, it just worries me because you could do things like, let's say I was doing an essay now with ChatGPT. Let's say I was doing a book report, okay? I would take the damn PDF version of the book, I would upload it into ChatGPT and I would say, 
make me a book report and I would give it the guidelines of the book report that my teacher gave me. So mm-hmm. it would have the exact instructions that I have, yet it would know the book. It would have the whole book memorized. And then it would spit out my whole thing. And then I'd go and I'd paste that into a plagiarism, AI plagiarism checker. And it'd say, this is all AI. And then I would say, okay. And then I would just reword it. And then I would, until the AI plagiarizer thing said, this is written by a human and I'd be done all my work. Yeah. And there's no way I would have read that book. Let's say mm. there's no way I would have learned the skills to even write out like a, a detailed book report. Let's just say, I don't know. You know, that's just one example of what it's, I'm saying. You know what? I never thought of it like that. It, in, it's in a sense, it, dude, it's insane. It's no, I never thought in, in the fact that like you had said those habits, right? Because for us, it's like, I know in particular for me, I've always struggled with English and writing and my teachers, when I would try to plagiarize or I would do something in in college, they knew right away that I couldn't write like this when I would cheat. Like they just knew. But now with chat GPT, like there are kids are, if they're implementing it right away, you know, that's their writing style. style. And not only that, it's also not building them the discipline to do that work yeah. and build kind of that muscle of, okay, things are not this easy, right? It's like, and, th- and that that's to a me, big thing with homework. Yeah, exactly. And that to me though is, is a sign that the whole world is going to shift completely because the things that we used to think are important won't necessarily be important. No. Like let's say you couldn't write properly in English, but you could prompt chat GPT and it was integrated into your phone's it keyboard. is keyboard. Yeah, you could download that you app. Can I know. download. I'm that just app. saying, like, let's say it's, that's a normal thing. It'll correct everything you're trying to say, anyways. Like, it, the and, only time yeah. you'll really be handicapped is if you have to like write on physical paper, which yeah. already barely happens with kids. So it's just like, I could see how maybe on the surface kids would look like they're less developed, but I just think they would be developed in ways that. Mm-hmm have exponential potential. You know what I mean? Because if you yeah. are perfect with chat GPT, but it's completely a crutch, you're probably going to be able to do everything a hundred times better than any other person. As long as you're aware, I think with chat GPT, the biggest thing is having the, if you have really, really, really good questions and asking it the proper things, it's cr- Insane, and I, so that's a, there's actually a document that I have, and I'll, I'll share it with you. And I've been working on this document with the best prompts, yeah, that I've been working because you know you have so many tabs on it that I'm like, oh man, what did I do for this? But now I want to save even more time, so I'm like, oh my god, this gave me such a great thing, or I had a really good conversation going back and forth with Chat GPT, like asking it this, asking it that. So creating that into a document has been a game changer as well for yeah, me. So super smart. for sure, man, if you can do it, you can even buy them nowadays. Bro. Yeah, you There's can buy literally prompts. chat GPT courses. There's a guy, I, oh, I don't know. I forget his name. I forget his name, but I saw it and I, and I had purchased, um, like a $5 thing like I did today. Mental, bro. Mental. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny cause they use chat GPT. To, to get yeah that, to create that and then which they sell is it crazy. to you. It's hilarious. And then forget ChatGPT now on the phone. Apple with the Vision goggles or whatever the hell it is, the Pro. Yeah, that's insane. The Apple Vision Pro. Man, that is scary. That is absolutely scary. How people are just walking around, fucking seeing multiple things. Like it's like, when are we? You think we're gonna go too deep into AI? That we're going to lose touch with reality? I think for sure. Yeah, for sure. Because I remember when Ambro had lent me his meta, the meta. Yeah, the meta goggles. The meta goggles. And I remember spending like a whole weekend at home. I was like, I don't need to go any. I don't need to travel. I was like, it's Friday okay, night. relax. No, I swear to God. It's, this is, it's, this is, it's really kind of grainy. Well, that okay, device. well, back in the day, you, dude, you can literally put, like, I would put in Vancouver and it would still give me the same feeling, the same adrenaline and be like, whoa, this feels so real. <laughs> and that was with the first version. I can't even imagine the version now, but that was back in the day, right? It was the first thing. This was like maybe six years ago or five years ago that it came out. I was like, whoa. So, but like, I, I was like, man, I, cause I was thinking of buying one. I was like, before I buy it, 
And I always do this where I buy something, I use it for about a week and then I never use it anymore. I was like, before I do this investment, like, let me see, you know? So he lent it for me for a week and I loved it, but I was like a little bit like, man, I was spending so much time just like in the metaverse. I was just like, it's scary. It's see, scary. I didn't like that one. I have it now and I used it for a week and I still have it and I'm going to sell it because obviously... I don't really enjoy using it and it got me even sick motion sickness and stuff for some reason. It is kind of realistic, but I find the Apple Vision Pro is like, that's insane it's because the quality the of, yeah, it's incorporating the real world already. That's insane. But then the fact that the quality is like 4K quality, let's just say, that makes it like a lot more immersive. Like I could see how that device, that device or at least the next generations of it, let's say in like a decade, that device is going to definitely it's change gonna society. It's going to be glasses. We're going to live it's in gonna those be, things. It's going to be to the point where you wear, like the glasses you're wearing right now, like think of the first computer of how massive it would, dude, every single year Apple's just going to, or maybe few years, I should say, they're going to just yeah, make, gonna make smaller it smaller and smaller, and smaller yeah, to the sure. point where everyone just has these glasses. I would love to have glasses. I would like love that. to have that too. You know what I mean? Even in a meeting, it would like show you the numbers that you're discussing. Let's say like you have the PDF on one eye and you're looking at him with the other eye and you're like, yeah, exactly this. Yeah. The numbers would be about 3 million, 400. You imagine that Dude. stuff like that or chat GPT like whispers in your ear, respond this, tell him this. He seems a bit angry. Oh, you know, man. imagine stuff like that. That's, like, be that's insane. like scary because it's like, are you even, you know what I mean? Like you have constantly like. There's a part of me that man. wishes I grew up in a time with no technology just because I think that I really, I spoke about this on other episodes. I really like discipline, you know, hard work. I like the lifestyle of like super discipline, kind of a monk lifestyle. I kind of like that lifestyle. Very simple. There's not many things to think about. You always feel good because you're taking such good care of your health and stuff. Yeah. Well, you've always I been think like that. that over time. Yeah, I've always been like that. But I think over time with this trend, like we're just going to be, there's no way everybody is going to be like, I mean, I'm not going to say people are not going to be disciplined, but it's just going to, it's just to say like, we're going to be so attached to technology all the time we're not going to be interacting the same way at all that that I, we do today. Like there's so not going to be as much, let's say physical interaction nope. in the real world. I wouldn't say, oh, I don't no, see man. why there would be with those type of devices. It's, it's like people are going to have their own lives online, which is already, we do it with Instagram, Facebook. And we just had, we were like at the beginning of it where, you know, it was just starting out, but some people have their whole lives. Like, dude, I'm seeing now these like, uh, Instagram models that are completely artificial, like completely AI. And I don't know if there's bots, but you're looking at, you can tell, you can tell, but there's videos, there's like photo. It's nuts, man. It's nuts. Like there are literal profiles online that people have created of someone that's not real. Yeah, yeah, it's insane. That has like a millions, I forget which one's the famous one that has like a couple million followers. That's insane, dude. Yeah, that's insane. Brand deals, there's brand deals like with someone that's not even real. You know how scary that is? Like that's it's nuts. It's just going to take away from people that work hard, you know, like No, I but know, I man. just think it's like it's like adopt or die. When the internet came about, a lot of people didn't want to adapt and use the internet. They thought it was a fad and it was going to, it was just not going to be something that stuck around when in hindsight, it transformed existence as we know it. Like mm -hmm. we, we, there's, we operate so differently because of that. Have you ever seen the TV show, the 100? It's basically no. where there's the poor and then there's the rich. The rich have moved to uh, space and the poor stayed on earth and it got infected. But I'm just saying it's going to be like a point where I think society is going to break, where I think some people are just going to go straight up to like the old days, like kind of just live in the woods. No technology where you have just the craziest like Futurama fucking you know, like simulation, like just crazy, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think like a healthy integration of it would be like if you don't have those goggles on your head, 
where it's like a big thing on your face that you're like really immersed in it. And instead it's more like the glasses, let's say like the glasses I have on right now. And it just helps me day to day. Mm. Meaning like, what's the point of learning how to specifically write things? Like it could probably just print out like, I don't know how it would do it maybe, but it could probably just show me the document exactly as I want to type it out and I could hand it to people or just send it to them. I feel like it's just going to make life a lot easier and people are going to still interact with each other. At least I'm hoping that's the case. People will still continue interacting with each other and stuff. And it'll just be that we're like super advanced humans with this crazy tech or the rich 1% will be in control of everybody so much easier because everybody's locked into these little devices probably you know how you know it could the other the negative side of it it could become like in the movie wally you know how they're all in those chairs all the fat people are in those chairs that just move them around and then yeah the chair just puts out a drink and then they just drink and eat and they're just eating and watching tv on these things zooming around and they're just fully immersed in this thing and they're becoming unhealthy blobs it could become that, and then we become easily controlled, and that's what Wally's all or about. Or AI then, just takes over and kills all humans. That would be sick. I don't know if that would no, be sick. Joking. That would be a little scary, yeah. but... Okay, by luck. Just to, just to, like, a couple more things I wanted to mention before we wrap up, okay? So another little tip I would give people is if you're using Chat GPT, first off, get the pro version and pay for it. And then figure out a way to use it. That would be my mm. opinion. Like I kept not paying. I kept paying for it. Then I would cancel, put it off auto renew and stuff. And then or I realized use my account. Yeah. Or I would use Nick's account. And then I realized, why don't I just pay for it? And then it forces me to think of ways to use it more. It's a hundred percent worth the $20 a month. It makes no sense. That's 20 bucks a month. It should be like five grand. Dude. And not, and, and to just add on to that, I hundred percent, if you guys, like if there's one that I recommend is definitely open AI that I've seen just because it has Dali, it has so many features. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I was going to get into there's like it. About exactly. 40 or like 30 different features yeah, yeah, yeah. in it, which is exactly. nuts. Go check the plugins on the pro version. Cause I think you have to have the pro version to access plugins. And then you yeah. could literally install different apps into chat GPT that do different things that's how you get chat OCR okay you could get other things like um, I was gonna pull up the list of pu- like plugins now but I have a couple other things I want to get into so I won't but go look at the list of plugins it could take it could uh, summarize PDFs it could it could access live websites and do different things with the data that it gets from there it could summarize YouTube videos it could transcribe videos it could there's a million different things that it could do. Go look at the plugins. And then lastly, for me, it would be a couple other websites I think are cool. One of them is like a GPT trainer, D- gpt-trainer.com. These are things I've yet to test, but I, I guess it's worth mentioning just to and kind I of And I guess what helpful. we could do uh, is we'll actually put the links in the description. I think that'll be good. That way people can just have access to it. Yeah, I guess so. It might be a bit difficult uh, for... Adam to like listen and or take maybe all I these just links. Ruin Adam's life. So yeah, maybe exactly. We we'll, well, that's uh, just guys. If we pause don't, it yeah, and yeah, just, just like come on, guys, Google it, and then or use AI to transcribe this YouTube video, and then ask it to link all the websites that we referenced. Boom. There you Homework. go. Homework. That's good. That's actually fucking good. Maybe it's not that good, but anyway. So one other thing, GPT dash trainer. You, this thing is like, uh, it's similar to what I was saying, creating your own GPT, but it's like made specifically for like, you train it to do something for you. And let's say for like a support team or or even for a Q&A or an FAQ type of thing for your business, this would be amazing. Like uh, your customers could interact with it and everything and it's you're training it. So let's say you have a, a thousand emails that you've sent doing, FA, doing a support yourself for your own business because you're a one-man show let's say upload every single email to this thing train it it's going to answer emails better than you you know what i mean i would assume so if it has all that data i haven't tested it but anyway and um another one that i have yet to test out again is this thing called ifttt.com and basically some of the stuff that does is like ai generated tweets for your blog posts AI generated LinkedIn updates for your blog posts. 
uh, generate a draft blog post for a topic, generate an outline for a topic, uh, meeting assistant, generate action items, takeaways, and a summary from meeting notes, get summaries of RSS feeds, feed posts as they've been published. So it's like RSS feed posts is like a post that continues to get updated, I believe. So it continuously update you and summarize that. Yeah. There's a lot of content creations. Tagged emails, generate AI response, all this crazy stuff. I think it would, uh, this one's more IFTTT from what I understand. It's kind of like Zapier, but a very simple version of it. Mm. Cause Zapier is very complex to do certain integrations. It's not as straightforward as maybe some of these other things. It's not as straightforward. The, the only thing that they do a really good job is for certain big platforms that it's uh, kind of like a basic command. But if you really want to go specific for a, like really customized Zapier could be complicated. Yeah. Cause then you'd have to create rules and it doesn't come out. But like, let's say for example, an integration between, uh, every time someone fills out your website form, you will automatically send them an email. Like that's like, you can zap yeah, you yeah, can, yeah. like, like that. You know what I mean? Like you can do it like with certain information or send, like you have a new lead, like certain things that are super, super easy like that. But definitely like that. I would say for me, if I can just sum up the best for people, I would say if you want to use what I've seen work the best, and this is just my opinion and other people can have it, but I would say the best for ideas and kind of creating more systems and automations, chat GPT, simply because there's a lot that you can do, especially with OpenAI and Zapier. Once you get a little bit more complex, mm -hmm. chat GPT right now I find is really, really good. I'm excited to see the one with Google. I would say for if you guys want to do content, editing creation as well as uh content ideas really good for ai outreach has been really one of the best for me in terms of messages dms uh, as well as customer support for some of the brands that we work with for basic 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 repetitive tasks and then one that i really like as well that i forgot to mention is something called merlin so merlin is a ai software that you could use in particular for websites and websites, YouTube, it kind of connects yeah, it's as a, a browser. It's a Chrome extension. It's a Chrome extension, exactly. Yeah. That kind of sums up a lot of the things. So a website can sum it can sum it up. You can ask it questions, but it's kind of tracking everything. Yeah, those have been really good ones for me. Exactly, and and Merlin is actually just using the API from OpenAI. Correct. So it's it's ChatGPT, but it's easily accessible when you're writing emails or mm -hmm. when you're browsing the web or when you're, it's just always, it's basically a chat GPT available everywhere around the web. Yeah. Yeah. There All you right. Have it. That's it, baby. Yes, sir.